Hello there, my fellow grimdark Han Solos, and welcome back to another shady episode of lore from Warhammer 40k. Quite recently, we got started on another rather random topic known as the Cold Trade. Now, this Cold Trade, if you didn't watch the previous episode, is pretty much the smuggling of alien artifacts in the Imperium. But there is a lot more lore around this smuggling than you might think. And so, in this episode, we're gonna describe some of the nefarious factions and organizations involved in all of this. Pretty much all of these groups could make good James Bond villains as well. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? To be part of the Cold Trade is to deal with some of the most powerful factions in the Coronas Expanse. Not the heated power of military might, but more subtle power generated by enormous wealth and networks of agents. These are the organizations that traffic with the alien on a regular basis. They utilize mysterious means and devices still hidden from the Imperium and some of them may even act on behalf of humanity's enemies. All of them are veiled in motive and method, and even the most detailed Ordo Zeno's dossiers on these organizations often contain only aliases and false information. However, although they are veiled in secrecy, these organizations are well aware of the players of the cold trade and the events which may affect it. For an explorer looking to make their name and fortune in the coal trade, the question is not how to operate without their notice, but how to profit without their assistance. The so-called Quintet contains the most powerful groups in the coal trade. They work together to ensure the smooth traffic of illegal Xenos goods for the profit of all, or at least the profit of themselves. The first among the five is the Kasbalic Ambition with their well-known mission on footfall. This crime syndicate has tendrils across the Calyxis and deep into the Expanse. Although there are often internecine conflicts between the main Kasbalic operations in the Drusus Marches and the Kasbalic mission on footfall over spheres of influence and profit dives, both sides realize that these can only benefit their enemies, and seek to keep these disputes minimized or hidden from prying eyes. The mission, often represented by one Vladame Tokara, is always ready to greet rogue traders new to the Expanse, and actively seeks exclusive Xenos artifact contracts. When negotiations fail, the mission is always ready with blackmail, threats, and even worse to aid in the negotiations. The self-styled Baron Armund de Veros leads the Kasbalika interest in the Quintet. He disguises a shrewd and calculating mind behind bluster and boasting. His goal is to ensure potential new challengers are cut out of lucrative opportunities before they become a threat to the Kasbalika and its own profits. Another part of the quintet is the Hecaton Cartel, and as the name suggests, they operate mostly to the extreme rimward of the Coronas Expanse. Led by the Barterman Primus Galton Farnham, the cartel members trade on their name to suggest their association with this deadly and mysterious area of Coronas. Although more localized than many of the other trading groups, they are growing in power and strength through the audacity of their deals. The traders operating under their sigil are famous for their extreme daring and the quality of the artifacts they recover. Little is spoken about those that never return from the rifts, although the remaining captains raise a toast in their name every standard year. While they don't have a fixed base in the Expanse, the so-called Serrated Query are widely respected for the breadth of their activities and operatives, as well as the extensive networks of spies feeding information to their controlling cells. If there are illegal thrones to be made, the Query are probably already aware of it, and demanding their slice of the action. They are also known for the extreme loyalty and ruthlessness of their agents, with their entire organization acting more like a religious cult at times. The Archeo Exhumators of Hive Sibelus have forced a place for themselves in the Quintet due to the power of their backers, 
the nobility of Sibelus, and other hive lords. They are well educated, well funded, and well supplied with manpower and weaponry. And they range over both the Calixus sector and the Corona's expanse to uncover new treasures for their master collectors. While others may search for decades for a lost civilization, the Archaeoexumators draw on vast data pools and voyage logbooks to make needle like raids, often reclaiming artifacts before others are aware that they were even found. They jealously guard their personal contacts and rarely act in concert, which is the main reason why they are not totally dominating the trade. The last member of the Quintet is maybe the most overlooked one. The Mist Fleets are a faction I mentioned previously. They are known for their skilled negotiators, and they became a part of the Five due to their valuable services in that regard. Their flotilla operates in secret, with highly encrypted astropathic announcements of their next location sent to their clientele register. It is an open secret that they have hundreds of vessels roaming the expanse and pushing beyond its nebulous boundaries for brand new acquisitions. Once they are found, the larger vessels break from the fleet to oversee excavations and protection, and then return to arrange transfer to the buyers. One certain Captain Marcel Cantoli of the Meander is one of the most well-known trader captains and is frequently seen at footfall representing the Mist Fleets. There are other organizations involved with the coal trade which are not part of the Quintet. Many of these operate as more buyers than sellers. For example, the Ordinati Xenologus is a rogue cult of the Adeptus Mechanicus, with an overwhelming commitment to the study of Xeno's artifacts. The Magos Nadi Kimura has sequestered herself and her courtiers in a secretive void station in the clouds of Port Wonder, where she deals with rogue traders on specific missions into the expanse on the Ordinati's behalf. The Adeptus Mechanicus presence in the Calixis sector typically ignores this small faction, but they do stay ready to act if their research or conclusions become problematic. Another prominent organization is the Amaranthine Syndicate. Although mostly known for regular smuggling among their normal mercantile operations, they are gathering more and more inquisitorial attention due to the many Xenos items found among their sea's contraband. That some of these artifacts defy identification is becoming problematic to the Ordo Xenos, and those dealing with the Syndicate are coming under increased scrutiny. Although they have informally petitioned for association with the Quintet, the members remain uneasy. There are dark tales which are told only when confidences are absolute for those who speak too freely are usually never heard from again. These tell of horrific alien guises, massive biological constructs, and insidious agendas far beyond simple profit. Needless to say, the Quintet is not eager to allow them to join. In the middle of these groups is maybe the most improbable of powers. She is the Lady Bellafon, Marquesat of Albia Novis, and the invisible Vertes of Port Wonder. She is the widow of one rogue trader, Ricard Pomfroy, and she is ridiculously wealthy. Her lavish asteroid estates close to the port host huge galas for those of the proper breeding, and it is here that she gathers information from the lowly dregs as well as the highborn nobility about the Xeno's finds, artifact desires, double crosses, and illegal dealings. This information is then bartered to the Quintet among others, with some special data put aside for blackmail or extortion when required. What started as a stimulating game to pass the boredom became her true passion, and she controls a vast amount of Xeno's knowledge and confidential information, and many find her too useful to outright eliminate her. As the Corona's expanse is not under the dominion of the Master of Humanity, the aliens are allowed to roam without rightful challenge. Xeno's fleets move across the expanse, such as massive crude war spheres or barbed Eldar raiders. Orc vessels leave behind destroyed worlds and drifting bloodstained flotsam, 
as they travel from one war to another. Strix's traders establish dealings across the expanse, ready to deal with anyone who dares. All of these and more act as sources of Xeno's goods for the explorer, canny or brave enough to deal with them. Such direct contact can lead to superlative deals, but it can also lead to deadly battles when negotiation fails. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the so-called Masters of the Coal Trade, as the title of the video might suggest, for today. It definitely does seem that the Corona's Expanse is the proverbial den of scum and villainy. All of these factions could probably make great settings and villains for an RPG game as well. What about you? What are your thoughts on all these criminal organizations and the cold trade? Did you know about any of them? I know there's at least a couple of them I talked about before in my Port Wonder videos. Do share your thoughts or questions, if you got any, in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the Emperor protects!